Hello friends and neighbors, Matt Hatter here, and you know I was thinking, this year being a year of movie reviews, I might want to give you an idea of what sort of movies I like, the movies that are my all-time favorites. I mean, obviously I'm going to continue with the favorite movies reviews, but which ones are on the very top of that list? Well, I thought for the first Movie Monday of 2011, I would give you my top 10 all-time favorite movies. These are the movies that I just enjoy watching the most. Let's get started. Remember, you're a wizard. Oh, on second thought, let's not get the camera on. Still princesses. Time travel, as you wish. Do you mean to tell me that you could have taken your hand out of that cuff at any time? No, not at any time. Only when it was funny. Come on, Eddie, where's your sense of humor? Screw Little Mermaid. This is what really kicked off the Disney Renaissance. This wasn't the first movie to combine animation and live action, but never had it been done so effectively. Director Robert Zemeckis didn't want to just put the live action characters in front of a green screen. He wanted interaction between the characters, but more, he wanted the audience to honestly believe that the animated characters were there. And even more than 20 years later, this is still pretty impressive looking. In addition, the characters are fun and it's a compelling story. Bob Hoskins and Christopher Lloyd are, of course, wonderful, and Roger Rabbit seems to epitomize every cartoon character ever written. And of course, it's funny as hell, which is the whole point of the story in general. And perhaps more importantly, it doesn't push bullshit morals or feature crappy, underdeveloped characters. Like some other animated films credited with starting the Disney Renaissance. Not that we're mentioning any names. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Because sometimes, you just gotta laugh. idealist to believe firmly in the integrity of our courts and of our jury system that's no ideal to me that is a living working reality I've already talked about this one quite a bit in my books versus movies review but it really is an incredible movie everything about this movie just works the story the cinematography and of course the acting Gregory Peck and Mary Bedham both play the roles beautifully as does Robert Duvall even for the few minutes he's on screen and, of course, is the integrity of the story and the characters. Atticus Finch is listed as AFI's greatest cinematic hero, even above Indiana Jones and James Bond. And the story is a timeless one about how we perceive others that I've already talked to death in several other reviews. In short, it's a classic, deserved of its praise, and one of my all-time favorite movies. Leslie will lose, your automobile will lose, I will win! <laughs> he jumped! <laughs> I shall build the greatest automobile in the world and I shall win! Well, from the sublime to the ridiculous. Of all the films that are intended strictly for the purpose of comedy, this is definitely my favorite. If you're unfamiliar with the story, it's pretty straightforward. Two rival daredevils design automobiles and race each other from New York to Paris. Yes, from New York to Paris. Tony Curtis plays the great Leslie, who is everything good and wonderful in the world, and Jack Lemmon plays his rival, Professor Fate, who is... not. And from there, it's just laugh after laugh. This movie is absolutely hilarious, and the scope is huge. And yet, it's all just about these two guys trying to beat each other to the prize. It's my favorite type of humor in easily one of my favorite movies. here or the Cambodians or the blacks or the whites or whoever they are if they weren't here everything would be better for you Lady, stop acting like you're trying to understand our situation why don't you explain it to me there are a lot of movies out there that tell the story of the inspirational teacher who was put into a crappy situation and ended up changing everyone's life movies like Mona Lisa smile music of the heart and mr. Holland's opus are movies that anyone planning a career in education should watch but my favorite of these movies is this one based on a real story as well as the book written about that story of the same name Aaron Gruel, a first-time English teacher, is given a classroom of so-called unteachables, a result of the integration program recently put on the school, and has to get these kids to sit still and listen, not kill one another, and maybe actually teach them something. How she accomplishes this and what she goes through in the process is truly an inspirational story. And what's more, it's all real. I'm honestly not sure why this one in particular touched me so much, maybe because it uses the power of storytelling as its motivator. But whatever the reason, it's an amazing story, and definitely worth a watch for any teacher. Your name. My name is James.
name's Tiberius Kirk. Okay, yeah, I almost feel obligated to have a Star Trek movie on the list. But of the 11 Star Trek movies currently released, this one is easily my favorite. I think what impresses me most about this movie is that you don't have to be a fan of the show to enjoy it. Much as I love Star Trek, I have to admit that it does carry a certain stigma, which is reflected in a lot of the movies. But this one seems to breathe new life into the story. The first priority of this movie is to tell a good story, rather than to be loyal to the franchise. But for all that, there's a lot of stuff in here for Trekkies as well. The actors play their parts perfectly, especially Zachary Quinto as Spock and Carl Urban as McCoy. The movie strikes that balance between keeping both Trekkies and non-Trekkies entertained. It's like what the original series could have been if they'd taken themselves as seriously in the 60s as they did in the 90s. It's everything I love about the genre, including time travel. Star Trek. It's just awesome. What would happen if I called Sydney Wade and asked her to be my date at the state dinner on Thursday evening? You're not serious. Don't I sound serious? The president can't just go out on a date. Well, why not? Jefferson did, Wilson did. The first of two Rob Reiner films on this list, The American President is, to me, everything a romantic comedy should be. That is, it has the romance and the laughs, of course, but it also has substance, and there's a drive behind it other than the gushy stuff. It's the story of a widower president who falls in love with an environmental lobbyist and starts dating her. As you can expect, this raises an almighty uproar in the press, which the administration then has to try to control while attempting to pass both a crime bill and an environmental bill through Congress. The story is written by Aaron Sorkin, who would later go on to create the Emmy award-winning show The West Wing, which also takes us behind the scenes at the White House. Aaron Sorkin also wrote last year's movie, The Social Network. Sorkin loves stories that take place behind the scenes, as well as showing us the many facets of a person's personality, and this movie does that. And of course, his dialogue is absolutely brilliant. It's witty, fast-paced, and just so wonderfully conceived. I've said previously that Sorkin is my absolute favorite screenwriter, so it makes sense that he would write one of my all-time favorite movies. I kidding. Fencing, fighting, torture. Revenge, giants, monsters, chases, escapes, true love, miracles. Doesn't sound too bad. I'll try and stay awake. Honestly, how could you not love this movie? Absolutely everything about it is just great. The characters, the setting, the story. As far as I'm concerned, there is absolutely nothing wrong with this movie. It's actually something of an oddity in the cinematic world, as it definitely has a cult following, but unlike most cult films, this movie is actually... good. But what makes this movie good is not the story of Wesley and Buttercup, though that story is fun enough in its own way, but the external story. The story of the grandfather coming to read the story of the Princess Bride to his grandson, a story which he himself had had read to him as a child by his own father. It's about the power of stories, how we perceive them, and how we continue to pass them on from generation to generation. When you look at the story itself, it is pretty campy and over the top, but the love that this grandfather, and eventually the grandson, have for this story is what makes this movie a classic in my mind. The Princess Bride. Really, what's not to love? Why well, killing a banker? Why'd you do it? I didn't, since you ask. <laughs> you gonna fit right in. Everybody in there is innocent. Did you know that? This is honestly the only movie that's actually made me want to read a Stephen King story. The story of two prisoners who form a friendship in the hellhole that is Shawshank is beautifully told. Morgan Freeman is, of course, brilliant, and Tim Robbins brings a wonderful performance as the wrongly accused Andy Dufresne, the sole voice of hope in a place where hope is in scarce supply. The way he continues to not only survive, but thrive in this place is inspiring, and the redemption portion, once you get to it, is just brilliant. Plus, the movie was filmed about 20 miles from the house where I grew up. That's right, Shawshank is actually the Mansfield Penitentiary in Mansfield, Ohio. Now that's pretty cool. You might be discouraged by the fact that it's a prison drama, but remember that the prison is just a location, not the focus of the story. Trust me when I say that this movie is well worth seeing. Remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder, treason, and plot. I know of no reason why the gunpowder treason should ever be forgotten. Another film I've talked to death already, both with a movie review and a books vs. movies review, but everything I said then still stands. This is a great movie. The acting, the writing, the direction, the movie continues to inspire, stimulate, and entertain. In short, it does everything a good story should do. 
Of all the things that I love about this movie, there are still two that stand out to me. The first is the character of V, wonderfully portrayed by Hugo Weaving, who has to act through a mask, which is not at all easy to do, and he does it well. And the second is the people of England, who are shown throughout the movie and begin as sheep submitted to the government's regime, and end up as people ready and willing to stand up to it. Like I said, I've already talked about this movie a bunch, but if you haven't seen it yet, you definitely need to check it out. Are you telling me that you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flux dispersal. Look out! <laughs> Okay, most of you already knew this, but yeah, Back to the Future is my favorite movie of all time. It does seem strange to follow up two relatively serious movies with this one, but I just love watching this movie, along with its two sequels. The characters are fun, the story is rich and detailed, and plus, it's time travel. And it treats time travel as simply as possible while still being able to tell the story effectively. It's really easy to get too caught up in the technology or the mechanics of time, and this story doesn't do that. It puts the characters in story first, which is where the focus should be. The time travel is just the vehicle to tell the story, and it's a great story and a great vehicle. This movie is celebrating 25 years of popularity, and it's easy to see why. Back to the Future, easily one of the best things to come out of 1985. And those are my top 10 movies of all time. In the comments, feel free to tell me some of yours, and until next time, happy viewing. Oh, yeah, and I should probably uh, also mention I hit a thousand subscribers, actually, while I was writing the script for this, so, um, yay. Thanks, all.